Unit setup, naming conventions, pivots, and material IDs. These are just four of the things to consider before bringing your 3D file into Unreal Engine 5. In this video, I will go over all the things I consider when preparing my ArcVis 3D models. They will make your life a lot easier when working inside Unreal Engine. I'm going to use 3ds Max, but it doesn't matter which software you use. These principles are the same in all of them. So let's do it. One of the most important things we must consider before starting to work on our file is its unit setup. Unreal Engine's unit system is centimeters, so we should set the unit setup of the 3ds Max project to centimeters too, or the scaling won't be right when we import our file into Unreal Engine. Go to Customize, Unit Setup, and in System Unit Setup, select centimeters. We can change the display unit setup to whichever we want. Mine is centimeters. Whether we import an FBX file into the software or model it from scratch, make sure it is near the origin of the world. It's better this way, as sometimes it can cause weird artifacts when the model is far from the origin. When we want to use light mass and build the light in Unreal Engine, it's better if the structure elements, meaning the walls, the floor, and the ceiling, are separate planes. For example, in the case of this room, we can see that each side of the wall is a separate plane. This way, their light map will be more accurate and easier to create, and the lighting, shadows, and GI will look better in the final result. I'll model the door and the door frame as two objects in case I want to make it an opening door. Keep the window frame and the glass as separate objects as well. This gives us more control when working in Unreal Engine. To keep the light from penetrating our scene, I'll create a shadow box around the building. We can't see it, so it doesn't matter how it looks. Add a box so it encompasses the whole model. Just create a hole where the windows are placed to make sure light gets in. This is our room with the shadow box in Unreal Engine, and this is without it. To create the light map, add the Unwrap UVW modifier to the object. Change the channel to 2, select Abandon, and unwrap the model. Make sure there are no overlaps as it will be a problem with light mass. Each face of the model needs to have its own unique space on the light map. We also need to ensure that there is enough padding or spacing between them to avoid artifacts. We can create the light map using the UV creation modifiers in 3ds Max or other UV editing tools like Rhizome UV. You can download the light mass example model on my website for free. I'll put the link in the description. When preparing the furniture models for light mass, the first things I consider are their amount of detail and their size. The quality of the light map directly influences the quality of the light and shadows on them. So, to have a high quality result, I detach detailed or larger furniture into several smaller parts. For example, this table or this lamp is okay as one object, but not this bed. It's made of 8 objects as you can see. I've also detached these into three objects. Make sure that the model we import into the file is not a group. If it's a group, explode it from here. Then attach the parts to form one object. When working with lumen, it's better if the structure elements are cubes and have a thickness of 10 cm or more. And in my experience, it's better if every part of the structure is a separate mesh. I'll visualize the card placements with this console command. You can copy it from the description. This way they will create the best cards, meaning we will get the most accurate and best possible outcome when lighting our interiors. Also, we get a better quality GI. You can see that the card placement of the other model, which I prepared for light mass, doesn't look as good. If I visualize the lumen scene, reflection view, and surface cache, we can see that the structure we prepared for lumen looks better in all of them. It means that in the light mass model, the lighting won't be calculated properly and can cause weird artifacts. Keep in mind that these two models are in the same level next to each other. This is the light mass model and this is the lumen model. For the window, it's better if the glass is detached from the frame. 
and make sure to give it a little bit of thickness. You can also download the Lumen example model on my website for free. I'll put the link in the description. Before moving on to the next section, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new Unreal Engine tutorials I'm planning to put here. Also, join our Unreal Engine Facebook community. I've recently created the group, so I'll be happy to see you guys there. When preparing the furniture models for Lumen, it's better if every object is in one piece. For example, if we have a chair, it should be one object and not more than that like this one here. Also, as you can see, the bed is one object. Every mesh becomes triangulated upon importing it into Unreal Engine. But if its topology isn't correct, it can sometimes cause weird smoothing or modeling artifacts, especially if the model has concave or hollow faces. So it's better to check the topology of the model before bringing it into Unreal Engine. Just to be sure, add the turn to poly modifier to the object. Then, in its parameters, enable keep polygons convex and limit polygon size, and set the max size value to 4. It will get rid of all the faces with more than 4 edges like this one here. Some of the objects may have more than one material ID. We can check it from here. But in order to transfer these material IDs into Unreal Engine, we must assign a multi subobject material to the model. So press M on the keyboard and create one in the material editor. Add as many material IDs as you need, then assign it to all the models you want except the ones that already have material. This is before assigning the material to this object and this is after. As you can see, the material IDs are correct. Every object in the scene should have UVW mapping, whether you model it yourself or get it from another source. You can see it from the way textures are mapped on them. For example, this is what it would look like if this object didn't have UVW mapping, without UVW mapping and with UVW mapping. For the structure, it's better to create the UVW mapping yourself. For simple models like this structure, it's as easy as adding a UVW map modifier to the structure. Select all the parts and from the modifier list, add the UVW map modifier to them. Depending on the form of the object, you can choose one of these mapping methods. For most architectural structures, box works just fine. Set the length width and height of the box. It's better if all of them are the same value. 200 works just fine for me. For more complex models, it's better to use the unwrap UVW modifier inside 3ds Max or we can use other UV editing tools like Rhizome UV. The next thing I want to talk about is object pivots. For structures, it's not that important because I usually bring them all in the scene together like this. For the furniture, it's better if every object has its own pivot. It will be easier to move them in Unreal Engine if needed. I will use Datasmith to bring them into Unreal Engine. One of the perks of using it is that it will keep the pivot of the objects. It's a good practice to know how to change the pivot of an object and where to put it. For example, I'm gonna change the pivot of this chair, this picture frame and this ceiling lamp. Select the object, go to edit and select transform toolbox. From here, I can align the pivot to wherever I want. For example, I want it to be at the max in the z-axis or at the min in the y-axis. For most of the objects, the pivot depends on where we want to place it. If we place the object on the floor, it's better if its pivot is at the center bottom. So for this chair, I will put it at the center in x and y and the min in the z-axis. For the objects that go on the wall, it's better if the pivot is on the side that goes on the wall. For this frame, I will set it at the mean in the x-axis and the center in the y and z-axis. And for the objects that go on the ceiling, it's better if the pivot is at the center top of the object. For some objects, like this table lamp, the center doesn't work, so I can go here and move the pivot manually. Before continuing, I want to let you know that I'm planning to prepare a lot of new ArcVis tutorials. Like this video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss them. Also join our Unreal Engine Facebook community. I've recently created the group. You can upload your work in progress, ask or answer questions, share your thoughts on the future of Unreal Engine and more. I'll put the link in the description. 
The next thing I want to talk about is the naming conventions. It's better if all the objects are named like this. SM underline name of the object underline a number. SM stands for static mesh. This way they can be easily managed in Unreal Engine. Layers are great for managing our files, especially if we have a large scene full of objects, buildings, cars, vegetation and other things. In this scene, I have put the structure in one layer and the furniture in another layer. This way, I can easily hide one or the other and work on what I want. Another thing that we have to keep in mind is to make sure that the polygons of the objects we want to bring into Unreal Engine don't have flipped normals. This is what it looks like if an object has polygons with flipped normals in 3ds Max. You can see they have a different color than the other polygons. And this is what it looks like in Unreal Engine. We can edit this by going to the polygon or element mode. Select them and click on flip here on the right. And now, we can see that it's correct. Another thing to consider is the copying or instancing of the objects. Datasmith recognizes instances and will bring the files into Unreal Engine accordingly. So make sure that the objects that are copied in the project are instances. It will make the file more optimized when working in Unreal Engine 2. For example, these chairs are instances and these are copies but not instances. After importing them into Unreal Engine with Datasmith, we can see that the ones that are instances have only one reference mesh while the other ones have multiple reference meshes. It can easily become a bottleneck for the performance of our project in a heavy scene. Datasmith can bring the objects with their materials into Unreal Engine. So if your file has materials, it's better to make sure there are no missing textures. I used the Relink bitmap script to do that. You can get it from the link in the description. It's free. Install it from the scripting menu, run a script, then go to customize, customize user interface, under toolbars select the column scripts category and add it to the toolbar. After opening it, close the donate window. On the right, we can see the list of the missing textures. Browse to where the textures are located. Click on relink and it will find the missing textures. It's as easy as that. And as you can see, now the materials are on the objects. If there are any missing files left, we can double click on them to see which object they belong to. Sometimes they are not important. There are also some options down here which I recommend you check out. So that's it for this video. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it's been helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new tutorials I'm planning to put here. Also, join our Unreal Engine Facebook community. The link is in the description. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Now, with all of that being said, I'll see you in the next one.